Hey everyone, Duox here, and in today's video I want to do an overview of OBS and specifically the recording and streaming presets because from what I found when I was kind of setting this up on my own, there's not a whole lot of information out there on OBS, specifically the streaming and recording settings and what do they really all mean. I've had people tell me what it should be, but they didn't really explain it and they didn't really say why uh, you might want to change it. So I wanted to make this video kind of explain how to configure OBS, not just for this setup, but based on your own hardware, what you should dial in. So first off, I'm going to go over here to settings. We're going to go to the output. Um, stream just has your keys. General has automatically record when streaming. I turn that off um, and I just manually start recording when I stream because uh, I had some issues where the audio got delayed if I streamed and record at exactly the same time. So I just offset that now manually. In output, I go ahead and I put everything, um, all the audio sources, I output them both to audio track one and that goes out to my stream. For recording, I actually have two different uh, audio tracks going out, two and three, and I have one for listening. Um, but when I'm editing the, the footage, that gives me separate mic and separate desktop audio, so I can then tune the desktop to have the uh, correct sound levels for both my voice and the desktop. And if I need to edit something out, I can. But for streaming, you have to have one audio track, and that audio track is the one that is mixed desktop and audio or mic audio. Uh, for the encoder, I have X264, that is the software encoder, which is another way of saying the CPU encoder, and that gives you the best quality. You can encode on your graphics card, however the encoders on there are not quite as powerful as your CPU, if you have a good enough CPU. If you have an Intel i5, you probably want to just stick with hardware encoding on your graphics card. And I think Intel has the quick sync encoder too, that one works okay. Um, but for Ryzen, the chip that I have, and specifically making this video based on Ryzen, you'll actually probably want to set in medium to high, uh, medium to fast. The lower you go on this list, the more intensive it is on your computer, but it gives you a higher quality video for X264 encoding. So I set it at medium, and I haven't had too many problems with that. Uh, it doesn't I don't have any drop frames in my games because of that. Uh, but Ryzen just has so much horsepower, you know. There's uh, 16 threads right here. Uh, so when you're recording um, with uh, your, your CPU, you actually can get really good quality out of medium and you won't be low on thread uh, usage. For i7s and i5s, I would say probably put this on fast to faster. Um, older i7s probably faster and i5s faster. Uh, or think about using a graphics card. However, I'm going to use my graphics card for actual recording and I want the stream to be as high quality as possible so I put that as the software encoder at the very high CPU usage preset. And I have profile set to high and um, for bitrate, you're going to want it to have a constant bitrate, that's what it stands for. Constant bitrate is what's recommended by Twitch. Had to look around a little bit for that. But that is the best option. And you want a bitrate between two and 3,000, maybe 3,500. Uh, don't go above 5,000. You're actually limiting your audience and Twitch won't like that. So I put it at 3,000. I might change it a little bit, tweak it to 3,500. We'll see what my quality is. And um, I have the output rescaled to 720p because at 3,000 bits per uh, uh, kilobits per second, I think, um, it is very hard to put 1080p out. And I want to do 60 FPS. So I have it set to 720p, 60 FPS. And that works at 3,000 bits, kilobits per second. And um, that's pretty much what uh, what's there to streaming, except for one more I forgot, and that is uh, variable frame rate should be turned off. You want a solid 60 FPS on your stream at all times. Over here in recording, I have the recording format to MP4. MKV is another kind of, uh, what do they call them, bins or containers, containers for recording H.264 video. Um, but MKVs are not recognized by Adobe Premiere. They have no uh, compatibility with that open source format. So I just set it to MP4s. I have three audio tracks. The first one is both the desktop and mic audio. And then I have two set as my desktop and three as my mic. I delete one when I get into editing. I then can change two and three to my liking to get the appropriate volume for what I'm doing. 
and I use a, um, I downloaded a plugin called AMD's AMF and it helps with the encoder. It gives me two options. I can set that uh, for graphics card. That's what it relates to. I can set that to 264 encoding or I can set it to 265 encoding. Uh, for 264, I found that to be more compatible with uh, Premiere at the time. Uh, for some reason, Premiere is not liking 265. VLC plays it fine. Windows Media Player plays it fine. Uh, just Adobe doesn't like it. So I'm keeping at 264, which is kind of a shame because 265 can do higher quality at lower bitrate. But uh, I just go really high bitrate on my videos. So it's okay for just recording. And when I uh, post it to YouTube, I'll uh, lower the bitrate in Adobe anyway. So not a big deal. Uh, so rescale output, I don't do that. I want 1080p 60fps for recording. Uh, so this, I can actually stream and record at the same time because I have my encoder set to the GPU, the graphics card, and I have streaming set to the CPU. And they're doing different things, but they're all both working at the same time. Um, so that lets me do both. So I'm going to record and stream at the same time, post to YouTube and stream to Twitch. The presets, the quality presets, um, this is a pretty complex area that uh, it's got a ton of settings and I was kind of lost at first. Uh, for first I have it set to view mode advanced that gives me the extra options here and oh all of this is output mode advanced at the top for streaming and both recording that will let you get the uh, full drop down menu here. For preset you can start at um, high quality or indistinguishable it's pretty good. Um, I have mine set to kind of a custom where I have a uh, quality preset uh, balanced that is for the AMD chips. Um, speed is probably the, uh, you can get really high frame rate recording. Uh, balanced gets about like 70 uh, frames per second recording, but um, quality will not hit 60 FPS. So if you have a RX 480, you can't hit quality. Um, this is similar to uh, the quality presets, pretty similar to the profile or the CPU usage. Um, somewhere I read that I think it was on the GitHub for this add-on. Speed is like very fast over here, so like here, and quality was like fast. However, I can't do quality because the graphics card is not fast enough for some reason, so I set it to balance, and I assume that's more like um, faster. So here's an obvious reason why you want to do CPU encoding. You get medium on CPU, faster on your graphics card. Um, but I wanted to save the CPU encoding, the quality encoding for the stream because you're limited with a bitrate. For a rate control method, you can basically set a constant bitrate like a stream, but you don't need constant bitrate for recording. You can actually do variable bitrate. And what variable bitrate is, is uh, if it needs the bits for to make sure that the you don't lose quality, it will raise the rate to whatever you set it to. Um, and if it doesn't need all of that data at that time, it'll actually drop down the bitrate to make sure the file is a bit smaller. However, I don't set it to variable bitrate necessarily. I set it to constant quality, which is another way of saying variable bitrate, but it tries to obtain a certain quality of image instead of a uh, maximum bitrate and then drop down a bit. So I wanted to kind of dial in a exact quality and this lets me do it. I set it to 25 for both the iframe and the pframe. What I found is it goes up to about 50 megabits per second at the most extreme level at this rating, but it will drop down to, you know, two uh, megabits per second when I'm recording the desktop because nothing's going on. If I set it to constant bitrate, it would be 50 megabits per second all the time, and that's just going to create too large of a file. It's going to be a pain to edit, pain to store in your computer. So I like the setting I got right here. Uh, Pre-pass, I didn't really find that made a difference. Hard to say uh, if you find it makes a difference. I skip it just because I think it might be too much work for the encoder and the graphics card. Frame skipping disabled. I do not want frame skipping to meet the target bitrate requirements. No, thank you. Uh, BBV, I'm not sure what that is. I'm just going to leave that at automatic. Leave that at the preset. Key frame interval, I've heard um, one is good for streaming and two is good for YouTube, so I'm leaving that as two. The video API can be DirectX 11, that's fine. Graphics card is what I've got right there. OpenCL, I heard. If you don't have an Intel CPU, you can enable that. Um, I don't think it made a big difference for me. I would have to toy around with that. I'm not sure if it's going to make it really um, higher quality. It makes it faster, so maybe if I enable that, I could probably enable quality preset quality. Uh, I would have to toy around with that. And view mode basic is basically what I've got. So that's really what it comes down to. I have the bit rates of audio. You can see mix, desktop, mic. That is the audio tracks here. But overall, that's pretty much what I'm doing for recording here. Uh, there's one last bit over here where it's the base canvas resolution 
and the output resolution. Just leave that at whatever you're recording at. And then when you go to output, then you can rescale the outputs uh, in the streaming and recording tabs. Don't really do it here, I don't think, unless you really need to. So that's pretty much it. Um, here's more complex settings, but uh, all I would do is set the process priority high. So recording on your CPU is not gonna be bottlenecked by other applications running. I think that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure to like if you liked the video, give me a comment if you want to see more of this. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Subscribe for some more videos uh, related to Ryzen and all this good stuff coming out soon, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.